Welcome to the introductory seminar on the IB Diploma Program here at Cardinal Carter Catholic High School. My name is Derek Chen, and I'm the IB Coordinator here at Cardinal Carter. This presentation is going to walk you through um, information about our program, as well as the application process. So what is the IB? The IB is a collection of international schools who are working together to foster uh, internationally minded citizens who are balanced and responsible and dedicated to their communities. The IB Diploma Program prides itself on excellence and creating international opportunities for our students through a rigorous, um, a rigorous international curriculum, as well as a faculty who's connected to an international body. So, why select an IB Diploma Program? There are a number of programs out there, and oftentimes I'm asked, what's the difference between IB and AP? And is IB better than AP? In short, really, it's not about one is better than the other. It's about what best meets the needs of your individual student. And so AP allows students to specialize in a certain area, whereas in an IB diploma program, being a diploma program means that it's dedicated to fostering a balanced student who has to take a number of courses. So in an IB diploma program, students will be required to pick up a language. They'll be required to do some math. They'll be required to do some language. They'll be required to do courses from a number of areas to ensure that we have that balance. And so why study in the IB diploma program? The IB diploma program provides you the opportunity to really engage the world. It provides an um, academic excellence, but also a, a clarity of assessment and evaluation in a way that no other type of program can provide. In regards to the transparency, what that means in the assessment and evaluation is this. Students write externally marked exams and students uh, submit externally marked projects or assignments. And so what that means is that at the end of the day, the IB is dedicated to quality control over the marks and ensuring that the student receives the mark that they deserve. On our side, what that looks like is a partnership between the school and the student to try and foster a certain skill set and to help that student along. For example, students who are um, submitting work, first they write the assignment, the teacher will then mark it because the teacher wants to make sure that they're as accurate as possible in the prediction of the mark, they're gonna then confer with their colleagues and with their colleagues, they're going to mark it once more and ensure that that mark is the correct mark. Then what'll happen is the paper is then marked externally by an external IB examiner. The IB examiner will then assign a mark. In the event those marks are different, what'll happen is it'll trigger an automatic remark. And so what you have is a system dedicated to checks and balances to ensure that there's quality control. What that means for our students is that institutions know exactly where they stand because there's so many IB candidates and there's so much rigor behind the assessment practice and the quality of the marks. And so if a student is um, applying to schools in Ontario, they understand what that mark is. If the student is applying outside of the province, that uh, if they're going to Vancouver or going to uh, Montreal, UBC and McGill understand exactly what those marks are because they're the same marks assigned to their students in their regions. If the student wishes to go to the States or Europe or abroad, what'll happen is again, they understand what those marks are. And so that's really one of the gifts of the IB. It's that transparency and quality control over the marking. The other aspect that makes the IB a exciting program is the fact that the curriculum is developed internationally and there are a number of stakeholders who help shape and craft the curriculum so that it reflects that international mindedness. Faculty will then confer with each other in regards to best practices in pedagogical design. And so our staff are trained regularly in the IB best practices and their subject areas, but also they're to integrate the IB's uh, approaches to teaching and learning and um, integrate those policies and practices in their classes. And so uh, the approaches of teaching and learning is a cutting edge pedagogy that's framed in inquiry-based design. 
And that's what we do in our classes. And so uh, that's really what you're getting with the IB Diploma Program. You're getting a program that's international in scope with a strict quality control over assessment and evaluation. So really, what's the goal of the IB Diploma Diploma program here at Cardinal Carter? Well, first of all, it's skills-based. We're trying to promote the attributes of the IB Learner Profile, and we're trying to stitch it and interweave it into all our classes. And so what that looks like is, um, instead of trying to chase a mark and saying, I'm trying to get this A or this percentage, it's about giving students the skill set of, I'm going to be an inquirer, I'm going to engage in critical thinking, I'm going to be balanced and engage in risk taking, and um, uh, be an effective communicator. Like these are the attributes we're trying to promote. And so that's integrated into our classes and that really forms the core of the IB Diploma Program. The IB Diploma Program also teaches students about time management. Because it is a rigorous program, students need to learn the skill of prioritizing and balancing their work to ensure that they can have that balanced lifestyle of healthy extracurriculars, uh, strong social connections, um, giving of themselves to their community, as well as dedicating themselves to academic rigor. The IB teaches students about organizational skills, and in terms of uh, what we're trying to output or in terms of our goals, the goal here is to not prepare a student for the jobs of today. We're really trying to give them a skill set so that they're dynamic, they're innovative and creative, so that they can craft and shape the jobs of the future. That's really the goal of our program. So when we look at the core of the IB Diploma Program, what we're looking at is uh, the IB starts from the philosophy that it's the learner first. And the learner profile is what you see here. We're trying to create those inquirers, uh, the thinkers. We're trying to make sure that the student is principled. And so when we talk about these attributes, these are cultivated through our uh, CAS, uh, so Creativity Activist Service, one of the core components of our IB Diploma Program. It's cultivated within the classes, so the different subject areas. It'll be cultivated in opportunities that are extracurricular in nature. And also, uh, there are a number of guest speakers. So for example, earlier this year, we had um, a PhD candidate from MIT come to the school and present to our students about how to cultivate these uh, skills. We've also had presentations from the University of Tasmania from their medical school where they talk to our uh, biology students about nurturing and supporting the Ivy Learner profile. So here at Cardinal Carter, we have quite a bit of dynamic programming dedicated to cultivating this because truly this is at the heart of the Ivy Diploma program. That at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is to create that risk, uh, an environment that's safe for risk taking because really without risk taking, we can't have um, any innovation. And so if students are constantly playing it safe and giving the safe answer and doing the safe research, then again, there's no innovation. So here at Cardinal Carter, we do promote that and we do promote that idea of resiliency and um, trying new things and uh, engaging in academic work that uh, really is about the student pursuing their interests. So in regards to the IB program, um, it is global in scope. There are over a million students enrolled in Ivy schools all around the world. And currently there are 5,248 schools around the world in 158 countries. And so what this shows us is it's broad in scope. And what it also means is that uh, the pedagogy, the curriculum, the policies are informed by truly uh, a global community. To give you a sense of how popular IB has become, it is quite popular in Canada. It's very popular in the States. And so this shows us that um, students enrolled in the IB Diploma Program truly do have international possibilities. Because there's so many students in different countries enrolled in this program, the universities from around the world understand it and value it because of its rigor and also its uh, pedagogical focus. So how exactly does it work? Well, first of all, it starts with the learner at the center of the program. So you can't have a academic program without the learner. And that is the approach, to, um, that is the, sorry, the learner profile. So we're cultivating those attributes. Outside of that, in the next ring, is the approaches to teaching and approaches to learning. And what that means is this is that pedagogical framework of 
how best to deliver the curriculum so that the student can engage it and engage in meaningful exploration that's valuable to them. Outside of that, we have the theory of knowledge, extended essay and creativity uh, action and service. And so these are the, what are called the core components of the IB. The theory of knowledge course provides that lens in which the student is aware of how they know, and that is going to be actively engaged through all the different subject areas. The extended essay is a comprehensive paper that's written, and it provides the student an opportunity to engage in true research, and they're going to be mentored by one of the faculty on staff and uh, engage in a question meaningful to them. And finally, the CAS, the Creativity Activity and Service component, is about creating those opportunities for students to get outside the classroom, be engaged in their community, and have those extracurricular opportunities so that they're cultivating those aspects of the learner profile. Outside of that is then your subject areas. So the subject areas are um, your sciences, your languages, your maths, and really the question in all those courses is how do I know? Because again, how we know through the different subjects will be different. And as a IB diploma candidate, it's about making those connections between how knowledge might be different in one course versus another. So extended essay. The extended essay is a comprehensive paper. It begins in year one. So in the IB language, um, grade nine and grade 10 are considered pre-IB, grade 11 and 12 will be your formal diploma years. Grade 11 is called year one and grade 12 is called year two. And what'll happen is the extended essay process starts in year one. Students are provided a number of seminars and workshops. The students are then to select a subject of their choice about a, um, a subject they're passionate about. They're then paired with a teacher mentor and the faculty mentor is there to support the student in their inquiry and provide them some, um, I guess, mentorship around how best to answer their question, what materials are needed, and uh, point them in the right direction for the research. The student then researches it on their own with support of the faculty member, and then they produce a comprehensive paper. When I met the recruiter from Stanford, they really liked the IB Diploma program because they valued the extended essay process. They said, when you get an IB candidate, they already know how to research, and that is a huge asset for them. And so the extended essay is one of those components where the universities do value it because of the rigor put in it. It's almost like a uh, mini thesis for uh, a high school diploma. The next core element is the theory of knowledge. And in the theory of knowledge, it's a epistemological course that asks the question, how do I know? How is truth constructed? And where this fits in the Ivy Diploma program is that how do I know truth inside a subject area? So what is true in math? And is what is true in math also true in science or also true in literature, also true in art? And how is knowledge constructed in science? And how is it constructed in art? And what are the different connections? And how does it connect to um, our sense perception and the ways we know? Or are there different areas of knowledge? And what does that mean? And so this is a course and it's the lens in which we're going to examine all our courses that it provides us insight into how knowledge is constructed and what that means and helps the student make connections between the different subject areas. The last component is the creativity activity and service component, CAS. CAS provides students an opportunity to engage their communities in an extracurricular manner. CAS provides students an opportunity to work on a CAS project where they're cultivating aspects of that IB learner profile in collaboration with other students and other members of their community to try and make a difference in the world. CAS is really important in the IB diploma program because again, it's part of that rounding out of the student. It's ensuring that it's, the student is well balanced, they're engaged in their community, they're engaging in activity that is creative in nature. So whether it's music, whether it's drawing, whether it's art, whether it's creating things, right? Um, it's also dedicated to activity, recognizing that it's a balance between mind and body. A healthy mind requires a healthy body. And so activity and rigorous exercise is important. And finally, it recognizes that service is a component that um, needs to be emphasized as well, that we're not just um, 
taking care of ourselves or reaching out to our community and being active in our community to serve others as well. And so creativity, activity, and service really provides our students that opportunity to be reflective of what they're doing and also help build out that portfolio to get them ready for the real world. So how does IB work? The way IB works is that students in grade 11 and 12 take six subjects over two years. So because it's a diploma program, it is balanced and that students will have to take subjects in different areas. And so what this means is that three subjects will be what are called standard level courses, which are taught at the Ontario grade level. And then three are gonna be called higher level. Now the higher level courses are gonna be taught at the university level. And what'll happen is if the student scores between a five and a seven, depending on university, they are eligible for transfer credits. That, for example, if I take HL math and I score a seven out of seven, then what'll happen is if I'm applying to a university, they can award me a math um, 1XX credit, which means they've given you a first year math credit in recognition that you've completed the higher level course at the degree and caliber of what was required in their university. All subject points are valued from one to seven. So once you calculate the points, uh, you can have a maximum of 42 from your subject areas. There are three bonus points, which are accumulate, uh, accumulated through the theory of knowledge and extended essay. This means that a perfect diploma score is out of 45. In order to pass the diploma program, you require at least 24 diploma points, and most universities require 28 diploma points for entry. Here at Cardinal Carter, we have a 91% success rate, which is higher than our world average, and our average score is uh, significantly higher than the global average. So again, one of the perks of the IB diploma diploma program are the transfer credits. And so similar to AP, a student is granted uh, those equivalencies so that when they go to university, they are granted up to three university course credits for uh, their work in the IB. And so whether it's the higher levels or success in the theory of knowledge course, depending on which university you apply to, um, you may be receiving equivalencies. And that's something to look into with the university of your choice. And so in regards to IB, um, over many global IB global conferences, I've had the opportunity of meeting recruiters from many different schools, some from U of T, some from Stanford, uh, some from all over the world. And one of the things they always talk about is the quality control of the assessment evaluation. They always say, we know exactly what we're getting because it is so accurate. So the IB marks are so accurate that it's a predictor for success in university and that's why they value IB candidates. Um, the Stanford recruiter also made it very clear that the extended essay was something that they valued because the student was able to come in or students come in with that uh, experience of research. And so that's something that makes it an asset. So in summary, why IB? The reason you'd select an Ivy Diploma Program is you want to be challenged. You want a rigorous education. And here at Carter, to give you an idea of where our students go, um, in past years, we've had students go to Ireland for medicine right out of school. We've had, last year, we had two candidates go to um, the United Kingdom to study medicine right out of school. In the year before that, we had a student go to um, Hungary for medicine. We've had students go to the States for medicine. So uh, where do our students go? Some of them go into med programs right out of school internationally. Some of our students will study in uh, life science programs, med sci programs here in Ontario. A number of them will go into engineering. We've had students go into architecture, uh, into business, computer science. And so really the IB Diploma program gives you that opportunity to go oh, apply internationally or Locally, the IB Diploma Program gives you the opportunity to engage in skills and create that well-rounded persona and well-rounded portfolio. And that's really an asset to the IB Diploma Program. 
And finally, when we talk about the transparency and assessment evaluation, it's truly a partnership between the school and the student to support them in skill acquisition. It's not about chasing marks, it's about skill acquisition to ensure that the student will be successful in their post-secondary years. And so, again, when you're reflecting on whether choosing an AP program, an IB program, a SHISM program, it's not about one is better than the other. It's about what's the best fit for the student, and that's something to discern about. So how can you apply to the IB Diploma Program here at Cardinal Carter? What you'll do is you'll go to our website, and when you go to our IB website, there's an Apply Here button. So you can click on that, or you can click on Admissions. What's going to be required is the completion of a Google Form. A Google Form will require an online registration uh, with the Grade 7 Report Card and the Grade 8 Progress Report. Also, there's a $25 administration fee. If you're having any questions about the application process, you're welcome to contact our office and speak to Ms. Janetta, who will happily assist you in this application process. The closing date for our applications will be November 27. Successful candidates will be contacted by mail and unsuccessful candidates will also be contacted by mail at a future date. So this concludes our presentation on the application and introduction to the Ivy Diploma Program here at Cardinal Carter. Wishing you all the best.